like I was a kid, but I remember this old school awesome vineyard music. Do you know what song I found on YouTube that um, that I have been obsessing over for like the last three weeks? It's the Toronto live worship from Vineyard um, and it's called True Love. And I really believe it's like, I hear these like Canadians singing it like over our country and I am clinging to that. That song is probably 30 years old. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just feeling such an affinity with Canadians right now because I've been listening to that song over and over and over. Oh, True Canada. Love. Awesome yeah. national anthem, by the way. Well done. Good job. Okay, so we are way off track. Yes, we are. Do you, somebody remembers that. Yay, I remember smiley that. Me smiley 100. me. Oh, that's yeah. our Fresnan too. Do you uh, speak yeah. Spanish? <laughs> my, my wife likes to act like she can speak Spanish. I wish I could. I, I, it's been a lifelong ambition. Yeah, and I, I should have by now. If I hadn't been, gosh, just crazy busy the last 30 years, I would have taken yeah. the time to learn. But yeah, it's our predominant, you know, we've 70% people of color in the community we live in. Um, and about uh, of that, about 50% of the total population is um, Hispanic. Um, so yeah, we're surrounded by a beautiful Spanish culture and language and food and um, Do you know yeah. what's funny? So there's Eddie Espinosa 7 joined. Yeah. Wasn't Eddie Espinosa the name of, of that famous vineyard worship leader? I'm gonna have to go look at that. I don't know. Are you okay? This is a question for Eddie Espinosa. Are you a famous <laughs> vineyard worship leader? Respond. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah. we wouldn't that be amazing? If we that learned him? from watching other people's lives that there's like a kind of a big delay. There's a delay yeah. when you put your comments in. So probably Eddie Espinosa five minutes ago yeah. joined, and we're just now <laughs> saying. So anyway, hang with us, Eddie, and let us know. Are you a famous vineyard former? That would be awesome, master? wouldn't it? That would that um, would be so so good. Yeah. Um, been asked people asking a lot of things, and some you know like somebody was asking, do you not take the Bible literally? And, you know, some of these things are such deep discussions because I can say, what part of Fresno do you live in? I live oh, across from go. River Park Mall. We're, Nisi, oh, yeah, wow. we're in Northwest Fresno. We're at Palm and near, Sierra. Near Bullard so, High School. Yeah. yeah. So not far from where Stone you are. Stone's throw. Yeah. Um, do you not, not think it's a bit self-righteous to think you can speak for God? Mm. I think I think God speaks through people. The book of Amos written in the Bible, he was just this farmer that like felt like God told him to go say something to somebody. So uh, yeah. we believe that you can hear from heaven and that things are inspired. And, and even non-Christians, my, my Buddhist friend, he, he believes you can hear from the heavens and from creation. And so I, I think there's something inherent in us that says, I can hear from something bigger than and me. And I would say, I think there are a lot of people who do like hover in that world and I and they think it's about them and I do think that's self-righteous yeah um, and it does come through our filter yeah so I I think you have to work really hard to be like I want what God wants more than what I want you know like I've been in a lot of church services or church settings where someone like you know gets a lot of value out of being the person with like this profound prophetic word and they're making it about them so um so you, it's you got to be careful for sure but I think for us like as I said earlier, like we're just really hungry and desperate for authentic God. And we submit ourselves to other people, anybody and everybody who would be like, yeah, well, here's where you're missing it, et cetera. We're open to that. Like, so being transparent and like submitting, that's a really big part of, I think, how we've learned to not make things about us. Um, but yeah, good question. And yeah. definitely got to be, got to be careful. So. You know, the, so say God wants a private jet. <laughs> Uh, I, it, that would be me. I want a private jet. <laughs> that is not a God thing. That is an Ashley thing. Let me say. Do you guys believe in the rapture? I'm I'm not a rapture guy. Uh, I and I talked about it on the last TikTok. I'm sorry we don't have a lot of time to go in that. Let me let me talk about the the Bible literally thing. You have to understand the purpose of what was written. So I would say as a as a general rule, I would say no. Not not all of the Bible is written literally. It, it was. They were stories being told by people that then somebody started writing down, like Moses, excuse me. Moses probably didn't write the books that we give to Moses. He was, he was narrating the story on an ongoing basis and somebody said, let's compile it and write it down. And so there are things, the book of Job is not to be taken literally. It's, it's, a, it's written as poetry, it is poetry. Otherwise, it's the weirdest thing in the world for people to just react, hey, now your kids have died, now your houses have been taken down, now you're, you know, nobody would react that way, but it's poetry and it's written to be poetry and we have to understand that it's a poem to, to sort of talk about God's interaction with humanity. It's not, 
Satan doesn't walk into God's office every day and say, can I get this person, this person, this person? And God says, yes, there, no, there, yes, there. That doesn't happen. That's not a literal thing. And so we have to understand the purpose of what we're what we're reading. Now everybody wants to know if you have a TikTok. I do not. I'm I'm hanging out on his TikTok. <laughs> Sorry. I'm of a little bit of uh, social media phobia. And so because people have been asking me about Romans 1, if I can just do a real quick teaching on that, we're almost out of time. Romans, so again, you have to understand why the book was written and, and what, so Romans is a book that's written in a classic Middle Eastern style. And so what, what they would do in their writing is they would set up a premise and knock it down, set up a premise, knock it down, set up a premise and build to this crescendo in the middle and then kind of go, so the, the book is written to come to this point and then go down. So if we read Romans 1 and say, look, God hates homosexuality, you're missing that Romans 1 is the setup of a premise that Paul is then going to knock down, the writer of the book. I'm going to spill my coffee using my hands. And so what he's doing in Romans 1 is saying, look what happened to the Greeks. They started worshiping creation rather than the creator, and here's what happened. They did this and this, they worshiped birds, and because of that, then they started having sex in the temple, and they had guys having sex with little boys, and they had, and so he's setting up the premise that he's then going to knock down. And, and he does that with the rest of the book. And it all builds to this crescendo of Romans 8, 28. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. That's the whole of the pr purpose of the book. He didn't write the book to say, see, God hates homosexuals. Wow. He wrote the book to say, because of Jesus and what he did, none of us are condemned for what we do. Wow. And that's the point of the book of Romans. And so if we take one verse and say, see, God hates homosexuality, we're missing the point that Paul is saying, yeah, see what happened to those people? And, and he's not even talking about like consensual homosexual relationships. He's talking about something that was happening in worship and, and, and everybody in his audience was like, yeah, we know those people are crazy. And so he was setting up the premise to knock it down and knock it down to build. And so that's why we have to be careful with this idea of, oh, the Bible has to be taken literally because then we'll misinterpret it and we'll read The Wizard of Oz and say, wow, this is a great book about yellow bricks. And that's where we started this yeah. morning. That's a, a great full circle. Do I have time to tell the um, story yeah. of Sydney and the and the rapture in front of your mom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope my mom's not on TikTok. I'm guessing she's not. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just like a quick little personal story. So our daughter, Sydney, who's now 21, amazing, amazing young woman who is almost finished with her undergraduate degree in music. We're sitting here in front of this beautiful piano. She's our musician. We are not musicians. And um, anyway, we look good in front of the piano. <laughs> yeah, that's about all we can use it for is this prop. But um, um, so when she was about seven or eight years old, um, our my in-laws, Paul's parents were visiting and they are the most precious, sweetest, like assemblies of God, old school um, pastors. They've given their heart and passion for yes, God their whole they, life. They are faithful and they love God. They live down in Southern California now and we really cherish them. Um, and they have, they probably would be upset to watch your TikTok channel, just to be honest. Very, yeah. kind of very different um, life and view of They of did not vote for Joe Biden. That's right. So anyway, <laughs> um, so one day they were visiting and um, and your mom says, tell, tell the rest of the story. She, she, my mom says, well, thank goodness Jesus is coming soon because the world is just getting so terrible. Yeah. And our daughter, our little eight-year-old daughter says like, oh, Nana, we don't believe in the rapture. <laughs> And my mother-in-law literally like dropped the pickle jar or like just had this moment of like, oh my God, what are you teaching my granddaughter? And um, <laughs> Paul was overheard the whole thing. And so he said to his mom, he's like, mom, you don't have to believe in the rapture to go to heaven. You have to believe in Jesus to go to heaven. Like whether or not there's a rapture, who cares? Like I believe in Jesus, so I'm gonna be fine. And uh, it just made her head spin. You know? Yeah, so Raquel, I think is the one who asked that question, who's, who's doing the, the relief uh, emoji there. Um, can you teach on Ezekiel? I, you know, I try to do lives through the week and do some teaching so that it, I love that people are asking these questions. We'll keep working on it. So send me a direct message. If you have something you would like me to do a teaching on, just You send also me a had DM. a comment of someone saying that we are not answering the important questions. So we what need was, to, oh. I don't know. I um, Sometimes it's just when you're we on We can't TikTok, answer everything. Yeah. And sometimes like by the time you're finishing answering one thing, like 10 other questions have come up. But DM and um, and then you can put put him to the test, man. He loves the tough. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. I, I didn't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs>
That's so sad. Uh, but no, you uh, should probably watch other parts yeah, of your Yeah, you might want to see TikTok my other videos. And, and know that that's not the case. But we don't break relationship over that. I can I have friends who have voted for Donald Trump, but if but if they want to then make that an issue in our relationship, that does end up breaking relationship. But I don't think you should say, you voted for Donald Trump, we're done. Uh, but no, we did not vote for Donald Trump. Go watch my videos and, yeah. and yeah, you'll, yeah, yeah. you'll see very clearly yeah. I did not. Um, yeah, so if, if there's something that you feel like I didn't answer, um, go t send me a, a direct message and I'll try to do a teaching on it and I'll alert you when I do that. I love that, I love answering those questions. So somebody said something about Ezekiel. Why don't you send me a DM and tell me exactly what you're asking and yeah. we'll try to work on that. I'll deal with the literal Bible. Somebody was asking about Muslims in heaven. I, you know, I don't know what the important questions are that we missed, but we're not, we're not to, and again, we can't answer everything. And part of this is we want to be able to interact with people and inspire you. And so we just can't hit every question. So we're gonna sign off, but before we do, would you please go actually follow old Pastor Paul. Yeah. So thank you for coming on. Um, we get so much just excitement from seeing the different locations. If you weren't tuned in when I was just sharing, like when we see where people are watching from, faith rises up in us because we just instantly imagine like, you know, all of the people in the town where you live and the ambitions they carry and their heart's desires and just how much God, God loves geography. He loves yeah. places and regions and groups of people. So we love connecting with all of you this way. Um, be sure to follow because, um, you know, we want to continue to grow this network of people who are hanging out together. Share and, it um, with others. Yeah. Um, not because we want to be famous. Tell the name of your podcast again. It's the Nonpartisan Evangelical. Yes, it's on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's all the places you get your podcast or my website is Nonpartisan Evangelical NPEPodcast.com. Um, so yeah, follow, it's not trying to be famous and we just want the message to get out. And so yeah, in some ways we would like for that to provide some income so I could do this even more so full time and, and buy the equipment we need and all that stuff. Hi, Indiana. Um, and a friend recommended us to A. Brown oh, who thought we voted for Donald Trump. Well, I promise we didn't. <laughs> YouTube is the Nonpartisan Evangelical. That's our channel. Um, on Instagram, I do a little Instagram and Facebook. Um, we have a Patreon page. You can find that all out on the website, npepodcast.com. Yeah. But yeah, mostly we're asking people, follow us on TikTok, subscribe on YouTube, and tell your friends. Yeah, And we'll keep doing it all there. Love so, you. God bless you. Um, evangelicals, are you Trump supporters? I don't well, know how many times we have to go watch my videos well, and you'll think, see what we But that's interesting. Like, that's kind of the point. Like, if you consider nonpartisan evangelicals, yeah. like the fact that it brings a shock to the system of like, wait a second, evangelical is always only a Trump thing. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's yeah. why we're trying to shine light on that unholy alliance between religion and politics that has manifested so aggressively in the evangelical church. It shouldn't be the case that the word evangelical produces a Republican or a Democrat response, right? That's the point. Yeah. Somebody asked about a donation. My friend Gary, uh, who's a great pastor on TikTok, is here. Hi, Gary. Um, Oh, A. Blackwell was another one of my buddies. Love all you guys showing up. Yeah, we're um, just winding down. Yeah, so somebody was asking about donations. So first off, we're for-profit. Um, this is a for-profit company. We believe in paying taxes to help our community, so we're keeping it for-profit. What? We yeah. like paying taxes. We like to pay our taxes. We like to have roads and schools. <laughs> we think that's important, and we want to be a part of that. Um, I would like to be here to hear a teaching on yes. Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the awesome. well. They're all over my page. Go watch them. But like, you know what? There's a lot of stuff on your page, so yeah. you need to like re refresh or something. But that's a great. And that is that just your 60 second or you need? I to have a long... both. I have longer okay. ones. So again, yeah. YouTube. You know, generally, if I do something 60 seconds on TikTok, I'll have something longer on YouTube or on. Well, my that's podcast. one of your favorite ones. You were just all yeah, over I that. Love that. Last the couple woman weeks. at the well is absolutely probably that's my favorite everything, story. Everything, everything. And I did a thing on go and sin no more. How we totally abused that verse. Um, we've got to go. But so somebody was asking about donating. So we don't take donations because we're for profit. But here's what you can do. If you go to NPEPodcast.com, in the upper right hand corner, there's a button that says Patreon. And we have a Patreon page where you can you can subscribe and you can subscribe at $5.99 $5 a month, uh, $12.99. I'll send you a free copy of my novel. 
uh, autographed 26 you know so you can go all the way up to some people do a hundred dollars a month and they get a, a monthly one-on-one -on -one with me so patreon nppodcast.com click on that patreon button in the upper right hand corner and you can help us financially um, but you don't get a tax write-off for it and and in a lot of ways i do that because one of the things jesus said in the bible is if you're getting a reward on earth then that's your reward when you're giving if you get a reward in heaven uh, that's a greater reward so but also if you sign up on patreon you'll get my book on audio you get to be on my private facebook group and some other things so it's worth it it's worth it all right everyone have a great week thanks for being with us see you again next thanks, week. thanks youtubers thanks TikTokers. we'll see you guys all right bye